Okay, so this is part two of the uh, of the share we had on the uh, uh, the puzzling behaviour of the Talmuds. Uh, and if you remember, we we started off by looking at uh, Tanis and Kofkimo, and we looked at Chani uh, Amagel. After it tells us the story of Chani Amagel, incidentally, in this week's Indian magazine in Hamadia, which happens to be over there, uh, my column was uh, a small digest of uh, at least one of the points we said in that share. But if you remember, he was he was out of his time. Um, and he asks Hashem to take his neshama back again after his long 70 year sleep and after the Gemara starts, starts, uh, stops telling us about him the Gemara goes on to start telling us about his grandson so this is where the Gemara starts off so uh, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with this Gemara but it's interesting to see how many questions you can have in this Gemara the Gemara asks, tells a story and then asks nine questions or uh, the rabbis involved ask nine questions we will ask more okay here's the story so, says he, taking off the glasses, one gets to a certain age, you know. Anyway, it says the following thing. Abba Chalkia Bar Bar Ibre de Chani Magal. So Abba Chalkia was the name of his grandson. Well, the it's Sorech Alma Lamitra. It's going to be very important. Lamit. <laughs> Rather ironic saying there's going to be a huge rain and thunderstorm and lightning outside at this very moment as we speak. I was watching at home, New York can be sometimes very moist in the summer. Um, so when they needed rainfall, then they used to send to him, Habim Shadra Rabon and the Gabay, they used to send emissaries, rabbis to him to ask if he would pray, and very much like his grandfather, Chani Magal, then that would bring home the uh, results they wanted. Now, I was stop, God, bacon, it's totally wrong, okay. Uh, and so therefore, boy, Rachmi, but also Mitra. Zimnukhan, so one particular time in Storach Alma Mitra, so there was a drought, so we needed water. Shadra Rabon and Zuka, the Rabon and the Gabay. So they sent a pair of Rabon to come to him. Uh, the so they, uh, or they would pray that there would be, there would be rain. Now again, uh, I'm going to sound silly, but we'll look at this in a, in a second. Who did they send to to get the, the rain to come? No, that's what they sent. Who did they send to? That Abi Chalkir should daven. Hold that thought, right? Because the story is different. But let's see. Azalbeisa, they came to his house and he wasn't at home. Also, Badabra, they went into the field, that's called the who called Rafik. He was busy hoeing in the field. Yavle Shama, they said, Shalom Aleichem, Salam Aleikum, Vola Asper Luhu, Ape, He didn't turn round, but as the Benish Kai says in Benu Yod, he said he did say Shalom Aleichem, Shalom back, but he didn't turn round to greet them. Gabi Menachet Tzivi Dora Tzivi Omara Bechad Kaspa, but Glima Bechad Kaspa. So when it was time to go home, then he put his cloak on one shoulder, and he put his hole, and he put the sticks that he had gathered for, I suppose, the, the, the burden that tonight for the cooking, etc., on the other shoulder. Kula Orcha Lo Sai Masami. And the entire journey he didn't put on his shoes, apparently he had shoes, but he carried them with. When he came to when he came to a river or stream or something, then he put on his shoes. Okay, you finding this interesting? Right. So there's there's lots of questions. The Gemara is going to say, well, why did you do that? What, what, what was that all about? Right, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So already they, well, we'll see the questions in a second. But pay attention because it's all crucially important. Then delihu lamoni. When he came to thorns and thistles, which is hard to say, thorns and thistles. When he came to the thorns and the thistles, apparently, then he pulled up, Rashi says, he pulled up the, they wore sort of like long, large kilts, like Scottish people do. And they went down to his, I don't know what it's called, jalabas, if you're in Morocco, long, you know, the Arab type dress. Uh, went down to the ground and he pulled it up, right? To above, I suppose, where the thorns and the thistles, so up to his knees, I'm guessing. So now it does look like a kilt. Um, so when he came to the city, Norfolk de Visu, la ape kimikashta. His wife came out to greet him, and she was um, bejeweled. Oh, that's the wrong word. Adorned. She was wearing jewelry. She was looking. She was looking pretty. Kimot la besa, all the besu la beresha, the hoda alai ihu, the hoda alai rabona niyasi. When they came into the house, she went first. Abachelke goes after her. And the Rabboni came after him, which you would expect what to happen. 
the opposite we'd expect exactly the Abichelkia he's Talmud Chacham uh, and then the guests and then the wife you don't walk behind a woman but you don't walk behind a woman so the Gemara already discusses that in Great Lines you don't walk behind your even walking behind your wife is not uh, appropriate walk beside each other but certainly not walking behind her for obvious reasons okay. certainly walking behind somebody else's wife can be problematic okay. men are troubled by the female ship and so you want to make sure that you only focus on your own life etc but so when they come into the house, then he breaks, he's got a loaf, so he starts cutting up loaf or breaking the bread. And he didn't say to the Rabbon, would you like something to eat? A strange. So when he gave to the Kashisha, to the oldest son, he gives Chad, Mazutra tray. So whatever fraction of bread, whatever fraction of the loaf he was, to his oldest son he gave one, one bit, one portion, but to the youngest son he gave two bits. Right. And so I, 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 when, uh, I think I mentioned in one of the previous years when um, uh, Pesach Kron, my dear friend Pesach Kron, when he, his brother passed away recently, and he apparently spent a whole month on Elo in Manchester uh, with the Manchester Rosh Hashim. And he even, uh, he wanted to, as it were, really get to know exactly what this great, great tzaddik was like. Even to the, to the point where um, the Manchester Shiva uh, found him in his bedroom. I mean, not, not when he was in bed, um, although the Gemara does talk about that. There's a Talmudian or a Talmud hiding under the, under the bed. He said, what on earth are you doing there? Is it a uh, I have to learn what's going on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, however, but he wanted to see how, you know, how his bedroom was, was arranged. There was a Sadaka box next to the bed. And so he said, why is that? And he says, well, because death is a 60th of, of uh, sorry, sleep is a 60th of death. And Sadaka matzah me mocks. So I give Sadaka, I'll go to sleep at night. So I'll wake up in the morning. Right. So there's a lot, everything that Sadaka, that somebody who's very special does, is obviously extremely irrelevant here. So they're noticing all of this as a, we are as well. Omluhu, the Vesu Yadano, the Rabbonim Shim Dimitra, Koosa, Lasek, Igra. So he said to his wife, So he says to his wife, Yadano, the Rabbonim Shim Mitra, Koosa. I know that the rabbis, these two rabbis have come here. And this seems to be sotto voce, as they say, if you speak any, any Italian. As he whispers to her, I know why these two rabbis have come. Well, it's hardly a surprise because they come whenever there's a, a need of rainfall. He must have noticed if he was out in the field that the, the earth was hard. Um, also, Nasig Igra, let's go up to the roof. Nevoi Rachmi, Esher de Moratzea Kodesh Baruch Hu. Maybe Hashem will listen to our prayers and there will be rainfall. That's strange, strange. Who did they send to Dabin? Abigail. He says to his wife, Let us both go and down. So I'll the igra. Maybe oh, and we, and the reason that we're going to go quietly and silently is that we don't we don't want to take any credit for ourselves, right? But of course, this is extraordinarily different to the approach of Kony Amago. Kony Amago, seventy years before, he, he you know, he, he, as we learned a few weeks ago, makes a whole big circle and the and the air stands there. So for Rabbi Shalom, so as Rabbi Dessa says, why he's out of time, his approach won't work. This Dorney did a new approach. It was very much with sneer. It was very much with. They, they weren't in the Madriga to openly, as it were, demonstrate their Kesha to Hashem or Hashem's Kesha to them. We won't take any credit for ourselves. So clearly, you rub a comb, he bechadas of his, he bechadas of his. He stands on one corner of the, of the roof, the flat roofs, of course. He stands on one corner, she stands on the other. Does this ring a bell? Sorry? So yeah. Rivka, very good. Kind of silk got none in the hags of his, the basil. Um, when they should they start to daven, then the rainfall comes on the corner where the wife has been davening. It comes first. <laughs> We've got this tremendous sound effects so of this. It was incredible. Why? We can do better than this. It's going to take too long for us to um, for me to read the whole thing to you. But you can get in the, I'll tell you the rest outside. Otherwise, we'll, we won't have time for the whole share. Um, so they, they then say, he then says to the rabbis, uh, why have you come? That's already raining. Why have you come to see me? So what, we come to see you to ask you to pray for rain. So, oh, wow, it's a good job that, uh, you, you know, that uh, you don't have to ask me because it's, it's already raining. And said, we know that you did this. So can we ask you a number of questions? 
we're intrigued by everything that's happened. Why did you, you know, can we ask you some questions? Sure. So he says, right, so why didn't you turn around and greet us? Because it's not just that somebody says Shalom Aleichem because they're like Shalom. It says in your office, you've got to greet everybody that's second upon in your office. You've got to turn, why didn't you turn and smile? It's very important. He used to say when I taught in the seminary in Manchester, Hasidic Girls Seminary, he used to drive me mad that they all looked as though they'd just been told that, you know, their nearest and dearest have been, you know, kidnapped by aliens and will never see them again or something. Uh, I said, look, <laughs> upon him is Matasios and Lengus and Shtar says it's a Rosh Sarabim. And you're from girls, so any of you passing by, or if you walk past a non-from Jew in the street, and he sees you looking as though you've just been told, you know, your, your, your mother and father have been killed, then that's not much of an encouragement for the people to want to become uh, from. You should, you should be. So say for Pony Mouth, what, what happened to that? So he says, well, I'm a, a scary young. I'm paid by the day. Every single minute counts. And otherwise, I'm stealing. So therefore, I turn around to you. I'm not holding properly. So therefore, I couldn't look at the other. I'm sure I couldn't stop doing my job. Right. So when we went by, when when you came with the, uh, uh, when we came with you, you put your cloak on one shoulder, but you put your, the, the 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 wood, and you're holding the other shoulder. Why didn't you put it on top of the cloak? And that would save your shoulder because you know if you carry something, your shoulder hurts. So I borrowed this. I borrowed this as a cloak. I can't use it for anything else. Okay. Why didn't he wear shoes? So why didn't he wear shoes? The menu Yoda says that he actually wrapped uh, rags around his feet. I mean, you got an idea how incredibly poor this man is. <coughs> so he's got one pair of shoes. I remember there's a book called The Jewish Family Picture Album, um, which, which I had as a, as a young man when I was a teenager. And it was a photog photographic book of the history of 19th century, 20th century Jews. And there was uh, Der Heim, and then there was, it was called The Emancipated. It's very interesting, I hold the books, very, very interesting. So it was the, like the Rothschilds, right? So there was their home, and I remember there was a young woman standing there outside a refit, which was her house, with a whole gaggle of children, or rather the collective note for a group of children is a noise of children. Um, and she was, what, 19, she was, I don't know, 20, 21, 22. Lovely face, yes, black and white picture, smiling with, you know, hardly any teeth. Of course not. There's no dentists in the home. You ever think about that in the shtetl? You got, you know, you got too thick. Well, first of all, you can't afford the dentist. Anyway, it's going to be 20 miles to get to the dentist. So, you know, somebody hauls it out. So this lovely young lady, you know, just, you know, etc. Oh, terrible. And the next section of the book was called The Emancipators. You have the Rothschild. The Baron of the Rothschild that was based in England, he had a carriage pulled by zebras. Sneers, huh? Don't flaunt your wealth. Zebras. I suppose that would be the you know, then the equivalent of a Maserati or something like that, you know, something etc. etc. And it was America, and then it was America, and it was you know, and of course, you know the the Lower East Side they're all familiar with. Uh, and there was one I remember in Poland was the guy who was sitting there, uh, and he, he a lot of them their job was schleppers, you know they were they, they, they would wait outside was Porto, that's right they wait outside the train stations, and this guy he was he was asleep on the ground, probably totally exhausted. His boots, he tied together, you know, with, and he was asleep like that, with holding onto his boots. He only had one pair of boots. Somebody stole his boots. He couldn't put them upside of something. You know, they'd be, they'd be gone. A terrible, terrible thing. Um, and that was that. He died. He's got one pair of shoes. Gosh, the story. The, the, if you look at the wonderful biography, and it really is, is the best biography of a godel I've ever read. Read is the one the I think it's the Art Scroll on, on uh, Rav Yaakov Kamenetsky and how he and his wife shared a pair of boots. One pair of boots for both of them. He's sitting and learning, you know, bare feet. She's got to go to the store or whatever they did, buy the chicken. Somebody could buy a chicken. And vice versa. He's got one pair of shoes, right? <laughs> it doesn't actually say that, but, you know, you're going to, you know, it would probably be sandals anyway. Of course, he took them off. The Rashi says that he, 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 the reason he puts them on when he comes to the water is because maybe there'd be snakes in there, so it protect his protect his feet. What happened next in our story? Oh. His wife comes out. And she is looking at all made to look pretty and gorgeous, and et cetera, et cetera. And now the, uh, the menu of yours has got a lot of uh, problems with this, because women wore veils in those days. So it must have been that the veil had slipped, and she was wearing, I suppose, makeup, mascara, whatever the equivalent would be. Or maybe she had, like, you see, Indian women who wear sort of like chains, gold chains, and nose rings, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, they want to know. So, yeah, the, the menu of is a, a great pains to establish the fact they weren't looking. They saw there's a difference between looking and seeing. Right. You, can't, you can't help what you see, you can't help what you look at. 
That's a big difference. Anyways, the Bikitzer, she was made herself look beautiful. So he said, what? And this is astonishing. We're talking about a man who's incredibly, incredibly poor, who is such a holy man that when he asks Hashem for rain, rain comes. And the answer is, Gemara says down here, so why why, um, why was it that uh, she was Mekashetas? So I'll read it again. So my eyes would not go anywhere else. I wouldn't be looking at anybody else's wife. I wouldn't look at any, any girl. So it's a very, very important idea of that. We'll come back to that shortly. Okay. Why tell me a lot of Berisha? So why was it that she went first and you went behind her with us behind you? Shouldn't it be the other way about? So, yeah, well, I don't know who you are. I've never met you before. No, I suppose there is a rabbinic dress, but as I sadly have had to tell people many times over the years, and as, as we all know, never be foolish enough to judge somebody by the, the externals. Any, anybody can buy the costume. Right? So he doesn't know who the boys are. He's not fair them. Doesn't know if they're sincere. Doesn't know if they, if they know what they're talking about. Doesn't know if they're, if they're the real thing or not. He's going to leave his wife. He's going in first. What's going on behind? He just, so that's that. Fine. Um, good. So to, to get to the to the crucial one there. So when they got to the to the, they noticed apparently that the rain fell on her side. They even saw them going up to the roof. I suppose they went out to look. Uh, young rabbis will do that. They want to see what old rabbis do. You know, to find if there's a pushkin beside in the nightstand beside the bed. And they saw that the rain fell started uh, at her side. So why? So the Gomorrah gives two answers. <coughs> One, he says, my wife, when people come, when poor people come to the door asking for bread, uh, which is, you know, sounds almost funny, because how more poor, <laughs> if poor people are coming to Abacheske, uh, Helke's wife, to, um, to ask for bread, I mean, how poor could they possibly be? Well, I suppose they had a loaf. My uh, wife's Zeta, was one of the richest boys in Slobodka. He had a whole herring to himself for Shabbos. A herring! You know how big a herring is? Right. Which he you know, sliced up and gave to some of his comrades, you know, because he was obviously one of the um, up and coming billionaires of Klaus Shalom to my herring, that was huge. Um, anyway, so basically, um, she gives bread straight away, he says, and as a consequence, then their, their, ang their, their hunger pangs, uh, their anguish is immediately assuaged. Or as I give them money. Gosh, this is a man who, you know, he can't stop work for a second. He's got to, that, that, day, that day's work, he's a day worker. He's got no permanent job. And he can afford a loaf of bread. Um, so he said, no, uh, there's a possibility uh, that, uh, that, um, uh, they, that my, by the time I give them, you know, uh, the money to go and buy the bread, they're going to be, that's another 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it was, of hunger and pain, so she's getting more skills in than me. Or another time, which is very interesting, another time he says that there's once baryonim, thugs and bullies, Jewish thugs and bullies, sadly, of course this isn't, at the time, just the time of the Chashem Lion, roughly that area, and there was real Jewish gangsters, really nasty people, and they were in the neighborhood. So I doubt that they should die. And why should Davin that they should do Shuvah? And because if she Davin for them to do Shuvah, that's why, you know, she's got Skusim that I don't have, which is interesting. The Ben Yoda on this is, is quite interesting. I'll maybe share this with you, because it gets so much to, to get through. But he says, if I can find this, I can remind myself exactly where he says this. Um, two, uh, two, uh, a couple of things. Um, the first thing he says is, why did both of them, if they were sent, if he was sent, or the rabbis that send heaven send to Abba What does let you and I go up? So it's an incredibly interesting thing. Rainfall is both male and female. Rainfall is both male and female. Kabbalistic. Okay? That is to say that the rain that comes down, that's male. The rain that comes up from the ground to feed the plants, that's female. And as the rainfall that we're talking about that they need in order to, to get rid of the drought is they need both, and therefore that's why he takes his, his wife up there. There has to be a female component to this to feel it as well to get the sort of rain that they want. Oops, interesting idea. That's that's uh, fine. Um, good. Why was it that uh, um, he didn't daven for for those people, uh, for the the baryonim, uh, instead of asking for them to die? So this is a very very intriguing thing. He says because well, you know what. They, we say, there is choices to be made here. 
a choice in life, and they become who they become. So as the Ron Shom has given them the choice now, so they, they become who am I to interfere with that choice and, and, and say that they should do Tshuva. I can say they should do they should do Tshuva. His wife's perspective was, yeah, but I can dive them for them. They are a chilek from me, I'm a chilek from them. And the Chazanish incidentally says that. I, if, I, if you're not doing something right, your, your Bechira is wrong, can I daven for Hashem to take away your Bechira? The Chazanish Paskins heard that she had many decades ago from Matzia Solomon. Chazanish says, I can do that. So her Hashkafa was totally different. Ah, oh, so, fine. That's the story so far. So far so good? Okay. Where do we go here? Oh. Good. So the Marsha says that this story about them dabbling on either side of the roof, as you pointed out before, is a Yitzchak and Rivka story. The Yitzchak and Rivka story is, is, is interesting because everybody remembers the Rashi there. So the Rashi says that the, uh, the, the Tvilas of the Tzadik ben Tzadik are far more efficacious, far more effective than the Tvilas of a Tzadik ben, uh, tzadik ben Russia. Rivka is a Tzadik Bas Rosh, you should say, really, but you get the idea. Whereas Yitzhak is the Tzadik Ben Tzadik. Fine. So I saw very interestingly, when I was preparing this year today, um, I found in Reb Shimon Schwab, he said something which I found was very intriguing. See what you think of this. So he's discussing this point, and he says, so Rashi brings the, the famous Rashi, Zeh, Omni Bezob Zeh, there's Pal Zeh, there's Omni Bezob Zeh, each side, opposite each other, the Yeter Loi, and it Sam says, be yeter loy. Okay, and he, he listens to his entreaties and she becomes pregnant. She ain't diamond to feel the tzaddik, the tzaddik to feel the tzaddik of Russia. You can't compare the two types of tefillah. Ad kandavar, as Rashi says. Be talking. So Rashi Mishmab says like this, it's possible. Levor, shashnei devarim alola tzaloyim zeb zeb. These two ideas are interlinked. What does that mean? The reason that each one, Yitzchok and Rivka, had to daven in their way, in their own way, because the whole experience, how they were davening and what the way that they were davening was going to be fundamentally different. Fundamentally different. Now we know that anyway, as I think I've mentioned to you before, and I'm sure you know yourself, if you ever, if you ever see a woman davening compared to a man, Davening, and you see that most easily if you go to the Kaus of Morovi. And if you've ever been waiting for your wife, um, you arrange, you know, you will meet her half an hour, whatever you say, 45 minutes later. So three hours later, and she's still davening there, and of course you finish. But if you look at the way that the women daven, the seat is usually up at their face, tears pouring down, quietly petitioning a sham to please change the anxiety. Very often men are talking about that. We are all yaka fighting with the angels, sort of thing. But he says, But in the case of Yitzchak and Rivka, there is a fundamental a different approach. That Yitzchak was automatically a Tzadik ben Tzadik, because he's a Tzadik ben Tzadik. He's got the God of Rome. Therefore, for Tfilas Rivka, he's a Tfilas Tzadik ben Rosha. And her Tfilas is a Tfilas of a Tzadik ben Rosha. That means to say, <coughs> not the way they're davening, what they're saying, well, that little bit, but because of who and what they are, that defines what the prayer is going to be. Obir ha'inyan, shad tzadik ben tzadik mispala ala bonim. Ad tzadik ben tzadik is davening for sons. And what's he going to say? Haruhu mispala shiyon b'loi ben ka'ovit. I want a son like my daddy. That's the picture of a child that he has. That's the picture of a home that he has. But zeba klal derech ha'teva. And that's derech ha'teva. Because that's exactly what you get. One of my youngest son just sent a picture of himself. Um... From uh, just outside Bnei Brak, and there's these apps you can get on, on cameras or on computers, etc. That can be older, or you look older, younger, that sort of stuff. So he's made himself look my age, and guess what? He looks like me, right? So very often we look like our parents. We get our temperaments from our parents. We get our talents from our parents. That's Derek Ateva. There's no surprise. There's a fact. There's a phrase in this in English, like father, like son. The Hebrew equivalent is like father, like son, like mother, like daughter. So what's the Kiddush? So for somebody who's got a father called Avram, to dab for his son to be like his father? Because he's a Tzadik ben Tzadik? Yeah. What's new? That would make sense. Avot Tzadik ben Roshim, Aspalal al-Abonim. 
What does the tzaddik ben Rosha do? He or she davens that my children are not like my father. Oh, Haru hu mevakish yon aloi b'shaloi yiki elpi v'rosha. So one is kedera kateva, but one's tefillah is shalok kedera kateva. I'm asking you, Hashem, to do something or to change teva effectively. And to ask Hashem to change teva is a much bigger ask, a much bigger request than asking Hashem just to, as it were, continue the path. Right? Did she say, please, Hashem, have my, have my child grow up like his father? No. Oh, like, oh you could, she could say that, yeah. But he wants to say he wants to say that in, but what he's saying is to say tzaddik ben tzaddik or tzaddik ben rosha, there is a natural. I mean, it's in the genes. I mean, we do give an inheritance of all the things I mentioned before to your children. She's got to contend with that. So she, yeah, she's got to let my son be like my husband. But that means that Hashem now is to overcome the teva of her body, as it were, her DNA, that will produce, you know, the temperaments of. When, I think I told you before we went, my, my late wife and I fostered a little boy. Both parents were schizophrenic. And the only condition that we made, we were the fastest qualified foster parents in the history of the UK. If they qualified us in two weeks, you know, all these sorts of legal checks and criminal checks and stuff like that. Um, and the only condition I made was that as long as there was, the child had not inherited the, the, the schizophrenia, which sadly he had, and the whole thing broke, up, broke down after a year because my oldest daughter was then three or four, we think, twice she, he pushed her down the stairs. Um, and of course, you know, then your children come first. But where did he get schizophrenia from? So there is, that's the tip. She's got to, the, the, the Tzadik in Russia has got to ask that the, the tip has changed. That's a bigger request. Something which is not Kederakatema. Well, again, law, how you feel. Same, show us the call echo this battle of his office. That's why. So, therefore, it's a different sort of feeling, and therefore, they're in each different corners, each dabbing for something else. And then he says something. Sorry? They're dabbing for the same thing. Yeah, yeah, well. Many dabbing for your children, okay, to dabbing for their children. No, they're dabbing for children in this case. In that case. In this case. Yeah, 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 this case here. Oh, we're coming to the rain. Well, we're coming to the rain. And then he just four lines. He says, and with that in mind, the Ulai, that's a new line, so perhaps. Yishlam Meshamasha Amr Chazal Shtfilas Sadik Ben Sadik Nenes Kaidem Enza Klal Bekol Tfilas. So therefore, if we're talking about that, therefore, if what I'm saying is true, then that means if I am asking a change of of uh, of Teva, that applies to when I'm asking for if I'm a Tzadik Ben Rosha, I'm asking my children not to be not to take take after my nature. And that means to say, therefore, he says that the 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 Tzadik Ben Sadik Tfilas. Being superior to the tzaddik and roshas, perhaps that's only if we're talking about children, right? Oh, Ella Rak and his palama ala bonim shaz nenis to feel us tzaddik and tzaddik. My office should aim him a back of dovish or can hit him. But if it's not asking something which is not which is against nature, then maybe the tzaddik and roshas to feel us are just as efficacious, just as effective, uh, and potent as the tzaddik and tzaddik. Tzaddik and roshas is really a tzaddik because it's all against nature. Right? Sorry, come on. Let him be like me. In which case, sir, in which case you're talking? Tzadik ben Rosha. What's he dabbing about? Whatever he's dabbing for. Let's see, dabbing for, for, for a child. Oh, he's dabbing for a child. Then to get for me, I'm a Tzadik ben Rosha. No, but it's not, get, uh, he says that, as they say, it's leaked in the vertier. What he's saying is Tzadik ben, right? You've got to overcome that. Right? Take after me. The parent already did. What? The parent already did. Yeah, but you know, things do come out. And, uh, I mean, Moshe Rabbein is, when Moshe Rabbein is looking at the Yalka Shmoni, Moshe Rabbeinu, it says, V'yom Moshe L'Shevis as a ish, when he's taken in by Yisra, he was content to live with the man. That's the normal translation. V'yom, he was content. Um, however, the Yom Tashmoni well, says, it comes to the word Ola, meaning an oath. He made an oath to live to the man, to live with the man. And the oath was, apparently, Yisra said to him, you can have my daughter's hand in marriage, on condition you give away your firstborn son to Vayda Zorah. That doesn't make them any oath. Um, and Moshe said, oh, sure, no problem. And he said, swear it, he swore it. But y'all, Moshe L'Shev is a What's that mean? Um, now, of course, as the moral of Prague, as Rabbi Destin quotes, he says, this never happened, this conversation never happened, this is nonsense. To imagine that Hava, you know, that Moshe Rabbeinu would conceive of such a thing. But very often, Kazan, this is a chidosh, a big chidosh, he says, very often, Kazan will tell you a story about somebody as though it happened, even though it never happened. In order to tell you a truth about them that was real, was true, so you can imagine somebody from Lakewood, his father's Rashiv, grandfather's Rashiv, etc. 
I bet you always wondered, I wonder what, I wonder what bacon tastes like, say. You mentioned bacon before. Uh, I wonder what bacon tastes like. In fact, lots of Jews wonder what this tastes like. What's the big deal? And of course, as we know, you can actually you can, you can make kosher meat taste exactly as bacon, look, smell, etc. And as far as the fish, it tastes like bacon. Leaving all that aside, this guy, let's call him Shmuel, um, he's walking down the streets in, in Brooklyn. He passes a Chinese non kosher restaurant. So he walks by. He would never go in and taste the stuff, but he goes, just a, a, a bit of a feel what it's about. Because I might say that that Shmuel from Liquid, he, he ate pork. Oh, he never did. But there was a bit of that was there was a certain truth to that. Does that does that make sense? Oh, when it comes to the greatest, the highest madrigas, that applies. So Moshe Rabbeinu, what do you mean he promised to give away his firstborn son to the Zara? What's he doing living with the guy? Well, Yisra is one of the greatest figures in the history of Cloud of Strong. He's been the Khan Godel to every Avodah Zara in the world. He says it's false, he goes on to the next one, the next one, the next one. He's desperately looking for the truth. What should be known is the truth. He sees the potential of this man. He's going to get a whole set renamed after him. I'll give him the truth. I'll stay with him. I will educate him. Which he did. Note that it failed. I don't have to create some stuff that he actually became Jewish. But imagine, and Moshe Rabbeinu is Moshe HaMachanach. So he's called Moshe the teacher. And yet it failed. But leaving that aside, uh, his ambition is noble, surely. Of his Rabbi Dessa says, but that's very nice, but what about the effect that he's going to have on you? It's almost as though that in staying with him, you're willing to run the risk of the interchange between you, living in that non-Jewish environment. What effects that's going to have on your kids? It's almost as though he promised to give away his son. His first, his son to fight his now, here's the, big, here's the big thing. If you look in Shaiftim, which we're about to look in a second, in Shaiftim, I can't remember where, where exactly we are, because this is off the top of my head, but I think it's chapter 19. It talks there about um, the avoid is already set up by Micha and how he advertised he flies on the internet or something for two priests, two comrades to come to a shrine. And the Gemara says, Moshe Rabbeinu's grandsons became comrades of Avodah Zarah. They became, right, his children, no. But that pagan, that contamination, as it were, remained dormant or passed to the next generation. So, you know, to, what about me? Yeah, well, maybe the next day I shouldn't jump. Okay, well, that's from Shuman Shrap. I found that very, very interesting. There's now in the Torah, always fabulous. There's now in the Torah, he says something different. What do you think of this? No. So his mahalach is that maybe it's only if it's you're davening for uh, a child, otherwise anybody could daven equally. He, say, he says it lands it differently. The Rashi again on Tefillah Tzadik in Russia. I was so excited, I was jumping about when I found this today. I was just thinking of trying to find a comparison. He, made, he, he comes to our topic exactly. They're asking for rain. And of course, the cloud came on one side, and the rainfall came from the white. And he gave a reason for this. Now he gave, we talked about it. What was the reason? Ah, she gave bread, and that meant that they weren't, they were, uh, their, their hunger was cured straight away. Or he davened for the baryonim, etc., etc. Good. But on the loy Abba Chelka is a voice of it's interesting. When, he's, when they say, why did it fall on her side? He, what? he says, you know, because she did all these good things. He's ignoring his own chelik. I thought you were tzaddik man tzaddik. Why didn't it fall for you? Should have fallen for you. So he says, how you barbarian to chal in magal, because he is a barbarian. Sorry to chal in magal. The esher shagam ovi ishto he tzaddik. But maybe her 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 father was also tzaddik, and that's why it would fall for her. In other words, it's same mahalach. It doesn't that it could fall for a that a, a he's saying. It, normally, when it comes to a child, then a ben a tzaddik and tzaddik's got a greater mile than tzaddik in Russia. He's saying that maybe that applies to, but only in a child. He says it applies to everything. And the only way we can explain that it fell for her when he's got a father who's called Nehemiah, a grandfather's called Nehemiah, is to say that she also had something special. But we don't because it's really, really good. Listen to this. Void Yeshua Marshal in and Matara on a Gadish Baruch, Lamish and Jason Prusil on in and Ashkin Rabon. Well, it would make more sense for it to fall in her says because Hashem always rewards me to connect and Mida. So they want the rain to fall so they'll have food. But she's the one who actually gives food, not pennies. She gives food. 
So it would be it makes sense for her to get it first. Me to get a meal. Aval inyan the boni ma meheres l'shmona tefilas tzadi ben tzadi. Oh, because then that, she doesn't have that advantage. Fine. Shem sibul yisel ami boni kasher mitzvah evet tzadi ben rosh. Oh, all Jewish lover. But this is very sweet. She yitzkot lo yodo ki okuhu. This is very interesting. Yisro didn't know that he could have any children. So the Gemara says, and 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 Yivonas and Samach Dalat is easy to remember because Samach Dalat is sad. This is very sad. That all the Elvis and all the Moss could not physically have children. Now, that means to say that Sari Menu did not have a woman. I mean, that's what I'll say. So obviously, she would know she doesn't have any children. Right? How would you know that? You won't have a Vesis. Of course not. Without a woman, there's nothing. Um, and therefore, she would know she's got a, a, a problem. But if you've ever been involved in this Parsha, and as a rabbi, obviously I have many, many times. And you probably, I'm sure you know people like this, they have to go for tests. Where does the problem lie? Even if a woman has a, a monthly period, etc., and she's, that seems to be okay, that doesn't mean to say it's okay. Um, and what with the man? So the, Yaakov, he says, didn't know that he was, he was she was an Akkor, but he was an Akkor. Um, his palom al Khaveri. When we know that if you die for somebody else, who'd sort of ice it up, and you need that same thing, who but on it, you got answered first. Isn't that clever? So really, he's davening for his wife. But really, he's got the same problem. So therefore, he's going to be answered first, and she's going to be answered second. Isn't that clever? I thought it was very, very good. Fine. So maybe, says this, Naim she was, a, she had, uh, you know, her father was a tzaddik in her, in her own right. How does that work by this character? If it, they're both a card. Right. So you need both of them to be cured in order Correct. So he's davening for her. His feelings are going to be effective, but what he didn't realize, also davening for himself. That's the idea. If you've got the same problem, you daven for somebody else. So then you're going to be Sorry? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, but the, the, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't help if he's not a tchila if his wife is still in a car. Uh, that's right. It'd have to be she also looks good. But he's davening for her, so that worked. But who's going to be? Of course, it has to be that she's, she answered as well. But but he was. We know that. We know the happy ending to that one. What is that? He didn't know that he needed. That's right, he didn't know he needed it. So, um, the question is, therefore, who was Abakelke's wife? Now there's a question. Okay? Um, it's very interesting. I told you I'm, I've started uh, writing a new book, and it's called, <laughs> listeners, um, it's called, um, well, it's going to be called, please God, I should say, uh, The Greatest Jewish Woman Then and Jewish Woman Now. And the idea is to take little known figures from Jewish history and tell their story. It's interesting asking many people in rabbis, what was the name of Dovid Imelech's mother? It's interesting to, 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 to discover that so, so few people know what Dovid Imelech's mother was called, and I'm not going to embarrass you by asking if you know. Um, but in the same way that people don't know her name, people don't know her story. Her story is astonishing. Who is Abichelke's wife's name? Remember, Abichelke, he's asking, they sent to him, but he brings his wife into the picture. She's obviously significant. What was her name? Who was she? And he said, oh, maybe because she's a, she's a Tzedekah, the daughter of Tzedekah, so a Tzadik and Tzadik, and that would be why it be, her Tzadikahs would be uh, effective. Hmm. Here's a story we all know. Oh, I'm so excited. It's been a very exciting story. Thanks for coming to the show because it uh, gives me a chance to actually uh, discover all sorts of interesting stuff. Including, do you know there's a set of sorrow called Asmaclaria? It's a whole encyclopedia of Ashkofa. And the fellows put it online. So in searching for our shear today, I found I've got a whole new resource. Fantastic. Anyway, that's by the by. Shoftim, I think we're all familiar with this story. This is Shoftim, chapter your gimel. But see for Benis Rala Asasarol, Beni Hashem, be in name Hashem, and be out of Bilishim Arboim Shah. And the Jewish people continued, as a continuation from the story, um, and that is that they've been losing battles against the Philistines because they were doing all sorts of silly things and non-Jewish things and Hashem is punishing them and it's a 40 year uh, 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 series of oppression on the, on the Philistines by Ish Echod Mitzoram and there was a fellow from a place called Tzoram and Mishpach and Sadoni he was a Danite Shmoy Manoach and he was called Manoach the all the story by Ish Dokor and his wife was barren below Yolda and she didn't have any children okay fine 
Vieno Malach Hashem El Haisha, and of course an angel appears to the Motulum of Omale Hine no Atakara. At the moment you're barren or you're childless, below Yalat, you lad it, and you don't have any children. But recently, all the men, but don't worry, you're going to get pregnant, you're going to have a son. Ba'atza Yashama, be careful now, be careful. Al Tishti Yai, don't drink you, don't drink any alcohol, the shaker. Ba'al Tachil called Tommy, and keep away from anything, Tommy. And you're going to have a child who's going to be a nausea from the moment of conception and the moment of birth, so no upsharing for him. Okay. But tell about Isha, but tell about Isha. She comes back and says to her husband, Wow, poof, I saw a malach. And he said, I'm going to have a child, so he died in Hashem. And. Uh, and he says, could we have more instructions, please? Could I see the Malach as well? And of course, what happens is, so he's, uh, he appears uh, to the wife, and again, appears to the wife, twice he's appeared to the wife. And uh, she rushes back and says, he's here. So Malach is up, and he changes after his wife, runs out, or goes after his wife. Are you the one that the man is supposed to be wife? Well known story, yes? Okay. Yeah. Who was. Do you know what she was called? Solopanus. Very good, that's extremely. What did you call her? Solopanus. Well done, how else do you know that? Very impressive. So, Solopanus, or Tsilopony. This is what the Medish Rabbah says about him, the mother of Shimshon. Biyar Malak Hashem so the angel appears to, to her. Angels don't just appear to anybody. You have to be an incredible high madriga like myself for an angel to come and see you. For an angel to actually come and make shalom between the, obviously a fracture because of the childlessness between the husband and wife. And to let her know Oh, you know why you're not having any children? Yeah, it's not him, it's you. Um, maybe she was blaming the husband. And the, re- the reason is not your husband's perfectly able to have children. You've got the problem. And that's why he's speaking to her. It's so funny. Um, and that's why she's called so funny. She came face to face with a Malach. Right? Poina. Poini. But ain't Solol El Bamalach? And you don't see the word Solol. To see or uh, mean in this case, it only applies when you're seeing a malach. So, therefore, it's so funny. I saw the face of an angel, that's what she's called. Lafisha Ross of a malach, Nikris Shemad, it's a little pony. And the oh, it's a little funny, maybe it is. Um, and it should be pony, really, shouldn't it? Um, anyway, because she saw an angel, she's called it's a pony. Show you a pony of a malach, she came face to face on an angel, in so little malach, and you don't see it, so it repeats a lama, nema tala below itself. So, I say it's a little. Two lamets and not heat seal, she saw, because she saw him twice. Two lamets. Lefisha says that for she stayed for Amim near his blood. On Maria came out of Malak and he looked like an angel, Mekan Shalom, he saw Shkina Shura El Al Bali Bare. The Shkina only appears to people who are on such a madriga. Biyama Lahine Choro, it said he's going to have a child. Abamash, Omer Law, Et Koro, Law, Gol Saloi, Shalom. But the fact that she was the one with the problem, he didn't say to him. Fine. That's the Medrash Shabbat. Next, Yalko Amechiri. Have you heard of a Yalko Amechiri? Never heard of it. Um, which is why this is a great discovery of us today, well, because he seems to know everything about every every uh, say for tomorrow. Sodin Osasov and Tim Kozu had self honest. Sodin Osasov, Isha Smile, Chalm Yimsa. Sodin Osasov. So she makes, that Isha's Kyle makes a Sodin, which is a cloak. Okay? And she sells the cloak, it goes on to, sells to the Kanani. But Tim says that's so funny. Show here's the men of Shimshon. Show us how they are doing it. So that part of 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 of, of, of Mish, uh, isn't it? Um, that is talking about Shimshon's mother, and then he brings from Midrashim. Mervadim um, also the law. It's so funny. It's emotional. Shimshon show here tzavach. Another reason why she's called it's so funny is show here tzavach on the chreches b'shuk. She used to spin. To make cloaks for selling, and again, as it's been all, to bring her son up according to what she was told to do. 
Actually, tell her, listen to this. But only that, she used to sit and give shirim in the marketplace, clarifying the Torah. She was a Talmud Chacham. That's interesting. Good. And the Ramomi panel. The Ramomi panel says, Tzilofonis, Ima de Shimshim, the mother of Shimshim, he aishas oin ben pelish. What? That's the nickname. I was going to say, when she sees the Malach, they called her Tzilfafonis, but that couldn't have been her name. That's the name they give her, the nickname because she saw an angel twice. So what was her name before? Mrs. On. She was On Ben Pelis's wife, whom she saved from the whole Misa with, with, uh, with, uh, with Korach. On Ben Pelis, Tzilu Bala Lefiko, and, and she saved her husband Lefiko, Rosa Malach, Yana Tzilu. And because she saw the Malach, and because she did that, Rosa Malach appears to her. But who Manoach and Manoach was on. No, what? He was from Ruben. He was from I'm not sure if he actually no, was from Ruben. Yeah. I don't mean they moved to Don. He seems to live a very long life. And anyway, that's what the, the Romani Pano says. Interesting. Sure. Mm-hmm. Nearly done. And then I found him say for Seder and Darius. Are you ready? This is what he says. Abachelkia, Barbara de Konyma. Abachelkia. Was the great grandson of Chani Magal, as we just been learning. I and Shalom, but my son. You look in the Gemara in the Megillah, you learn all the story. Cause of Sefer Gugulim the Shamas, Ois Aleph. You look in the Sefer Gugulim, then it says Who Menoyach, Alma Oresh Holach Acha Ishtay. Who was uh, Abba Chalkia? He was a Gilgal of Menoyach, who went after his wife. Remember when the angel comes, he goes after his wife. Now he's back. And of course, the whole idea of Gilgo is to put right things that you made you did wrong before. When the Chachamim come, the wife goes in first. So the Gemara already answers, but there's other reasons why all the this, why all the questions they spotted about this incident, the the behavior of these Sadiqim. This is all the Gemara only gives one shlav, one dimension of answers, and more answers as well. And he's aware of who he is, and he wants to demonstrate by this there is a reason that it's, in our times halachically, when it's absolutely mutter to go behind your wife. And if you look in the the various before Shimon the Gemara and the Marshal, etc. There are times it's much to go behind your wife. If you're protecting your wife from some other man, well, of course you can go behind your wife. Ah, oh, you shouldn't do it like a tequila. It's not like a tequila. Vrotza Abba Chelki Larazki Masha Osa Az, like a vana or a mutter, Kishaboy, a love of Chomim by Adamatra. When they, when they, when they came for rain and to get to pray for rain, he repeats the behavior that he did of his Manoach, and just like here is Kosher, it was Kosher then as well. Begam hora chasidus ishto, and he always, and he he demonstrates the chasid of his of his wife. Ganona kadam anena because his she got answered before he did. Be it tzilfafonis because she is a giggle of tzilfafonis. The mala kadam laboa etzla because the mala came to her before he came to him. Amalak mala ba oy tzkus acheres the ishes chakia matzliv al beroni ba adore ba tshuva ihu matzoni b'dumah and of course the other things she did as well. Who was she? She was the wife of one of the palace. Who was she? She was the woman uh, who had done so much, and she was in such an incredibly high madriga. And he realizes that, and that's why he takes her to Davin. They come and ask him to Davin because he's such a tzaddik, but he realizes that she's not higher madriga than he is. Was she a tzaddik ben tzaddik? Wow, well, she could certainly say she is, but there's a madriga where a person, as we discussed a couple of weeks ago, there's such a thing as yichus, but as Rabbi Desta says, and the Sorim say, yichus is like a row of zeros, nothing until you put something in front of it. But you can do something which is so significant, and as it were, you, you kickstart a whole new a, um, uh, dimension or creation of yichus on your own. And her madrega is so high that she is able to be in madrega where the rain's going to come from her, even though he's a tzaddik ben tzaddik. Maybe only, as, as we said before, in the, from uh, Rosh Hashim Shrav, maybe it only comes in the source of a tzaddik, uh, a ben tzaddik, if it's a child, but not uh, otherwise. Anybody could be equal. Certainly, of course, if, you're not, if, if you do incredible things, and we're about to come to the story of Pimkas, even though he had yikas, he had, which is positive, which he could claim, and the, the Torah points to, 
but he legitimized that ecos by his actions. The story here of uh, of the this what looks to be strange behavior. Every single single example of Abachelke's behavior was ausgeheschpt, not to embarrass people. I missed that bit out. Why didn't they give us bread? Because they didn't have it. He said it because you. I didn't have enough bread for you, and I know that you would pretend that you didn't want any. I'd be there for inviting you to lie, and that would be unfair of me to. Every single thing he did was incredibly cheshman, because gedolim, everything they do, is incredibly cheshman. You just have to spot to be able to ask the questions, why are they doing it that way? But when you actually get the answers, why is there a pushkin beside the night table of Manchester Rosh Hashima? You can see that everything is with cheshman, and therefore, there's rather a lot to, to learn from Tzadikim, as long as you ask the questions about what seems to be the strange behavior. One search.